to need to you want to really it's yeah this Now my friends we are going to uh, start back Now uh, we have the dhamma sharing dhamma talk the main dhamma talk of this uh, retreat but this is not going to be again a traditional dhamma talk i uh, perhaps i ask you questions and i uh, want to know what you think and then <coughs> discuss and we are planning to finish this by 11:55 or sorry 11:15 and then we are making our way to the dana hall there is a distance to go so 11:15 we are going to be finish uh, hopefully we are going to discuss the most important things today healing meditation healing my question my first question is that why if we are hurt if there are things that we have not healed physically mentally emotionally why have we not been able to heal let's start from that point i think that is a very it's a reverse psychological question in a reverse psychology right why have we not been able to yeah for those people who are going to sit you might not see my the white board either you have to switch to this side uh, then you will see a lot of things you know if you are far away perhaps you can move to this side the same chairs you might not see what i write probably uh, if you want to stay it's okay but yeah and i also want to say that uh, there are two q and a sessions one is today uh, another one is tomorrow today is general q and a about meditation buddhism anything is almost for half an hour after lunch and tomorrow is the q and a for today's uh, dhamma talk so you can ask questions uh, in real time give you the mic but some people they are shy you can't be shy in the dhamma practice you know you have to ask because what if you go you die with the questions huh? one day you go you bring questions to the next life you don't know whether you have become a cat or dog next time you can't ask question at that point right? rather than asking some love <laughs> so ask question clarify doubts uh, those questions may be not uh, very educated or may be very silly it's okay that is your life nobody is trying to uh, think about you in different ways if you if you don't uh, feel you want to ask that way uh, we, uh, i think there should be a box over there uh, with a piece of paper write your question put inside the uh, question box but when you write don't write in calligraphy write in proper <laughs> english letter sometimes i have a problem to answer well, who who wrote this question you know cannot understand so they have doubled the question you know mess to mess so, you know you have a mess let's unravel the mess so yeah so my question is if we have not been healed in our life then why simple question why what do you think let's talk it from buddhism and normal life accepting ah accepting part so one reason could be uh not not uh being able to accept accept this is one uh bigger one of the biggest causes actually not being able to accept uh clinging clinging uh, we call it clinging another reason is clinging to clinging to we can say memories sanya memories we have memories with other people we call it uh, sanya in pali but don't worry memories experiences and all that clinging to memories this is another reason what are the other reasons of why uh, you have not been able to heal yourself self self you self you have your own 
attitude, right? Attitude. One attitude. Attitude views. Ah. Ah, denial, right? Denial. Yes. So that means this is a. Yeah, the, the flip side is denial. Same thing, we don't want to repeat this one. Denial. We want to condense, uh, condense, otherwise, so many ways. Yeah. Another causes why you have not been able. Uh, maybe not. You want to heal, but you don't know how to. That means uh, probably uh, not competent enough. Huh? Not comp competent enough. Maybe, yeah, not competent enough to heal. Like in Thailand, I could go and uh, one day we have a ghost in our house. Huh? In the month, you cannot chant. Come with a stick. Bless you with a stick. The more we hit you, you feel like the ghost will go away. It's not like chanting and the ghost will go away, the peta go away. We have to do something physically and then only, then only they feel uh, something happen. But anyway, not competent enough to heal. Uh, you want to heal but you cannot. Then other courses. Pardon me? No panya. Yes, I think all these happening because of uh, <laughs> ignorance. So it's 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 the common cause, the root cause. Yeah, put it like this on the side. Ignorance. Yeah, we we not bring it to this part because all these are happening due to ignorance. Yeah, but what are the identifiable? Cannot let go means we we have clinging. That means same thing. Cannot let go. Same thing, huh? you have clinging to that. Then, huh? cannot forgive yourself. It can be an attitude, huh? attitude, huh? different attitudes. Not being able to. I think we can take it as a separate one. It's, it's good one. It's a major one. Uh, that means uh, not uh, forgiving. Or maybe unforgiving, no? That's a bit one. Unforgiving. Then? No gratitude. No gratitude. Okay, very interesting. No gratitude. Ingratitude, no? Ingratitude. I think at a I, I believe the board will have no space if you come up with the right courses, you know. So many courses, yeah. No metta. Yeah, unforgiving part, yeah. You don't forgive because you don't have metta. People who don't forgive, no metta, right? Then? Weak sadda, trust. Yeah, so I, I would call it uh, not competent enough. You don't trust enough. So that means insecurity. Insecurity, this means lack of sadda. Sadda doesn't always mean trusting about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Sadda means being able to trust. Overthinking. Think too much. Overthinking. I think it is also an incompetency. Incompetency. So, one put in Roman characters, then uh, overthinking, overthinking, then self-centeredness, self yeah, it is a part of the view, huh? self-centeredness, actually we all are self-centered, the problem is uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, ego, he put it ego, easy, because we all have to kind of self-centered, but this is too much ego. Then, huh? 
being skeptical yeah doubts doubts so yeah unforgiving yeah one of the things are doubts whether i can heal or not <laughs> i th- i don't think i can heal people like that and then fear of uh, uh, huh? fear of retribution uh, impact fear of the uh, effect ripple effect huh? yeah retribution yeah so that means it is also part of this issue i think fear of uh, fear of uh, fear of healing right healing which has fear of healing then Yeah, that's the root cause. If you know the Dhamma, you can. That means Buddhists cannot be hurt. Buddhists cannot be hurt. If Buddhists are hurt, Buddhists should be able to swiftly recover. What I mean is that it's, the, it's like uh, the changes in permanence. Mm, no, not being able to understand. I think, I think it is the first one, denial, this part, not being able to accept. That means changes are happening. Then let's say, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, not embracing changes. Because not embracing changes. Because accept means the, the same, oppo- polar opposite. When you don't accept, which means you don't accept the changes. So, I mean, acceptance and change, they are connected. So, yeah. Are there any other are there any other courses? Yeah. Yeah, give me a second. Not knowing the not knowing the process of the course. The thoughts, the thoughts. Thoughts. Ah, okay. not knowing the conditioning of the thoughts conditioning the process happens through conditioning interesting so this is a part of not, not being able to comprehend not uh, understanding the conditioning of the of thought thoughts and thought process this is also something out of that overthinking it's kind of parallel okay others yes you were trying to say something over there huh? ah support system support we need support we have problem problem and over problem but nobody help us no kalyanamitta no no real people in our life we have people digital friends thousand and thousand digital friends on Facebook, uh, social media, Twitter. But when the real thing happens, nobody is with us. But there are people with us, but they are not competent. They are even worse than us. Those people have more problems than us. So how, how can they help us? So that means support system, I would say. Yeah, it's very important. Support system. Maybe uh, support from Kalyanamittas. Hmm, very important. Whatever these things are happening, if we have them, problem will be spotted very easily. Because now the Buddhists are also becoming very self-centered. Huh? They think they go to the room, they practice meditation, they attain Nibbana. Right? They think it is happening in the room itself. Then they are going through the problems alone. So they want to separate from the Kalyanamittas. So then all the things are happening here. Partly he or she thinks I practice, but these are happening. You know, so we need that support system. We will discuss them later. Okay, we will take one more course. Any other course? Self-discipline means sila. I think it's a part of uh, competency. Mm, What do you call uh, uh, discipline? 
discipline seal all right i think time is going fast so let's go back let's start from the most important course right this is this is the demos thing ignorance actually we all are differently ignorant so we don't have to bug it a lot but we understand ignorance that means all these uh, things are happening because we don't understand us we don't understand our problems we don't understand the things that are happening around us so just forget about that part because this part can be only understood if we understand the causes first thing is support from kalyana methods ah uh, think about the teenagers who are who are taking their life these days a lot are they elderly people mostly middle aged people young adults or teenagers who are taking their life in today's world committing suicide a better civilized world is taking life teenagers is it a big problem it's a big problem yeah they are supposed to be directed uh, they are more they are supposed to be more competent than you than your time uh, you think that more opportunities are there but then lot of uh, pressurized uh, competitive uh, things have been happening to all of them plus when everybody is becoming competent it's easy for somebody to bully another person in that group at that time it didn't happen it happened in a way but in today's world because when everybody is competitive to for one cause it's very normal for many others to bully while they are functioning is it true uh, this bullying happens so when these things are happening these teenagers don't know how to approach someone who they can get the support and others are bullying them all the time right and they are bullying mentally physically emotionally they are picking on that person because it's fun for them because they are all pressurized too in the system everybody is tired no matter what is happening in the studies they have to outsmart right does it happen in our buddhist groups 20 30 kalyana mitra so called kalyana mitra so called so called kalyana mitras are practicing together now at the same time they are more more focused on the enlightenment part so every monk finishes dhamma talks at saying you have to attain nibbana so you are more intensified you are more pushed to attain nibbana then one of them uh, surfacely think uh, uh, seeing you showing you i am better than all of you guys i practice more meditation and for them meditation is 2 hour 3 hours 4 hour practice it's utter ignorance about the sutta text overall wide learning about the dhamma wide learning they they learn one sutta they think they know everything right in order to understand buddhism we have to have a wide learning we call bahu satcha bahu satcha anchasi pancha bahu satcha pali word where, where does it mention ah huh? mangala sutta bahu satcha you have to have a wide learning wide learning i think for those of you you understand who are attending my other sutta study dhamma talks i normally pinpoint a certain example in one of the suttas there's one sutta i'm i'm aiming these things later just just to tell you something as one sutta in this sutta there is a pali word called uh, kukkuta ram kukkuta ram what is it kukkuta ram ah kukkuta ram means chicken feet chicken feet <laughs> eh see there you go <laughs> Okay I'm why I'm going to write it here This is not about healing okay chicken chicken feet has no connection to the uh, healing but don't don't bring it kukkutara If you look at the translations of this Pali word in many uh, suttas I'm not picking up anybody because out of respect lot of translations go by as you say chicken feet 
some say chicken monastery because arama means temple kokkuta means chicken feed some even translated cox monastery pretty bad you know <laughs> I mean, this is too bad A very famous scholar you know from england from cambridge in you know, cox monastery but the problem is what is this it's really disturbing some say chicken feed monastery that means at one time bante ananda was staying at kukkutarama so they wanted to translate the place can we translate the places ah this is the problem can we translate people's names do you have dhamma names here how many of you have a pali dhamma name tell me your pali mudita mudita means ha huh? simpat so can i call you hello sympathetic joy <laughs> are you happy <laughs> out of you somebody else a lot of you sorry i can't take everybody but you please metta we don't call it hello loving kindness i mean you know <laughs> right so we don't translate places in pal we don't translate people's names we only translate dhamma concept other things what has happened here in this sutta kukkuta means a person a person kukkuta is a banker businessman so this businessman what he did he offered a temple to the sangha so then it should be like anatha pindika anatha pindika sara temple donated by anatha pindika we don't call hello the person who help poor people anatha pindika who gave free food to the uh, poor people so this has to be translated the temple that was donated by kukkuta not the chicken feed because the part this literal meaning literal meaning is chicken feet so this means a lot of issues in the translation many issues be very careful if you read suttas you have to read under a teacher don't go secretly to the sutta central or these websites and read by yourself you might get really stuck with these issues so that means uh, uh, we need kalyana methods okay wide learning is important so what kind of support we can get from kalyana method who is a kalyana method huh? who is a kalyana method yeah who 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 is a kalyana method to you you may have your own version who the one who gives you a right to the temple the one who you, who works with you in some activities what is the buddhist interpretation of kalyana you know not your interpretation someone. someone who always thinks good thoughts how do we know can we know other people thoughts can buddhist develop telepathy we can we can it's a certain uh, knowledge in the meditation actually when you know lot of things about you you can understand how people think Right. remember that there was a monk who went to a monastery uh, and then uh, he wants to uh, this is what seven, 10 monks went to a monastery another village and then they started practicing vassa time the lady who was supporting the 10 monks a little senior lady and she asked what are you doing in the temple now you always don't go out this are we meditate we practice okay can you teach me also and all the monks thought she became a sakadagami person she attained some monks then she understood these monks have not attained anything <laughs> <laughs> they supposed to attain because she attained in the house it's very new to her but she had clarity and then every time the monks think ah today i think roti it is nice if she brings some roti then tomorrow roti is here they were very scared this lady knows our thoughts our akusala thoughts she can crack down on us then they were more scared they started intensifying the practice do more meditation clarity otherwise she will catch us <laughs> our akusala thought very very embarrassed to us to see her actually when she brings dana then finally they attain nibbana they went back at the vassa then uh, 
uh, then the Buddha asked, how was your wasa? Then uh, they said, because of this lady, she uh, really provided support with her sons and daughters, family, and then we attained. Then another monk overheard this. Okay, I also want to go there. Then Buddha said, okay, you go, you can go. He didn't know very much about this lady. And every time he thinks he wants to eat certain food, she is bringing those food. <laughs> he got even more scared about this person. <laughs> Then he said, I cannot live here because uh, she will catch my own Akusala thoughts. <laughs> he went back and the Buddha said, no, no, go back to the same place. You chose, you go back, that is the place you will attain Nibbana. And then finally, he attained Nibbana. So that means understanding thoughts can be possible. Right? So, um, Kalyana Mitta is someone who has uh, always he comes or she comes up with good thoughts. What are the good thoughts? Less clinging thoughts. Less clinging thoughts. Right? Uh, what about there is a husband who is saying, if you die one day, if you go away from me, I, I'm going to abandon our children. Challenging the wife. Maybe vice versa. Right? And then, so the spouse feels that uh, this is clinging to me, you know. It's okay that uh, you say that, but why are you involving our children into this clinging? That's going to be a problem, right? We should not involve them because they are very poor people, what you call innocent people. So clinging. So that means uh, less clinging thoughts. At the same time, less thoughts about hurting other people. There are people who are 24 hours boiling all the time, like an electric kettle, uh, you know, automated electric kettle, always boiling, boiling, boiling and then uh, crash at the end, you know, crash. So, we don't need to be that kind of a person, right? Uh, so, the third one is right view. So, the one who has less clicking thoughts, uh, less, I, I, I understand truly, we all have anger differently, but the nice person is someone who always try to keep it low all the time, who happily understand. Third, uh, so this is one part of Kalyana, I mean, the spotting Kalyana. Second is, Someone, you can see this, someone who always speak the good words, speech part. Always try to speak the truth, always uh, trying to unite people, not to break people, uh, say something to person A and then say something different to person B and say something, something more different to uh, person C and then very happy, now people are clashing, <laughs> right? Maybe they do it willingly or unwillingly. So, the third thing is, hurting other people with speech and then gossiping. I think gossiping is a big issue. We just have to uh, put more emphasis on gossiping, idle chatting. That means uh, we waste our time with some other people, precious time, because this time will not come back to us. So this is the second part, how to spot a Kalyanamita. Third part is actions. You can see how your friends, so-called friends, so-called Kalyanamita, they kill, they steal, they, sometimes you feel they are good, but they are sexually misbehaving, you know. And you know, you, you, you keep a blind eye, you know, I don't, this is not my business, you know. But they are Kalyanamitta, they are doing that, we know. And they have a double character. So, a real Kalyanamitta is this person. But we uh, have a lenient, lenient aspect about this sometimes. So, we should have Kalyan. The Buddha said we must have two Kalyanamittas, mandatory two. The Buddha said, don't worry, one is me, second one, you have to find out. Sometimes we don't need a lot of Kalyanamittas. Then they give a lot of ideas to us. Sometimes we are troubled, you know, what are you talking, you know? The Buddha said in Abhidhamma like this, Buddha said this in that, I went to a Dhamma talk, he said like this. Um, I did something and I heard something on the internet. So you are more troubled than not having Kalyanamittas. It's better not having anybody, right? So then, uh, two is enough, actually, because you can focus easily. Two means Buddha is always, and then, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean you uh, isolate others. You happily say, you do your metta. So when you have a Kalyana metta, you can discuss. Actually, you don't have to find somebody outside of you. Your husband, your wife, your family people can be your own Kalyana. That is the ideal level. 
Otherwise, you have to go beyond this family. Yeah? You are creating some other problems too. I know some people have some issues when they want to get some advices from brothers and sisters outside the family. Insecurity problem, trust issues. Better to have someone in the family. This is very important. I think if you have it, you cover all the things. Second, not being able to accept. Okay, anicca. Pali word is anicca. This is also a word we have to understand going beyond the literal meaning, like Kukutarama. Anicca in Buddhism means two things. One is uh, changes, understanding the changes. Second is what do you call, uh, I would write it uh, this way. You can say things are changing and Things are changing and uh, changes are possible. I think a lot of Buddhists don't believe this part. Changes are possible. They think change is change, I have to accept it. No. Buddha said, yes, I am changing, everything is changing. Uh, sometimes you are trying to fix something that is not existing in our life. It's already gone. But the second thing here, Anicca, is Changes are possible. What changes are possible? Can you become a wise person tomorrow and today? Yes, possible. Can you change your uh, bad karma? Possible. You can change a lot. Right? So, a lot of things with regard to anicca, uh, we can change. We can change. Normally, when things are changing, a lot of people take bad changes only. There is someone who has had a very bad, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, eating habit, uh, bad eating habits, not eating properly, not eating healthy food, always depending on the junk food and then uh, not understanding how to eat, understanding the right time to eat, skipping breakfast, getting the other problems. Now after 20, uh, 13 years, now coming up with a lot of health issues. Now other people are, what are you happening? What is happening to you? You are not showing up. You are not looking good. Anicca, you know. Anicca. I am a part of Anicca. Now I am embracing Anicca. Who made that Anicca? It is not Anicca. You messed up in your life. You messed up. The Buddha said how to eat. Not what to eat. I think food habits are very important. Buddha clearly said about it. When it comes to religion, philosophies, lot of people are interested about what to eat, not how to eat. You go to any religion, they are talking about uh, what food should be eat. This is the main concern. Uh, there is one religion, uh, if you can go study. Uh, I studied, uh, because I studied Sanskrit for my bachelor's, uh, my, my major. There's a book called Manusmruti, the oldest book about human civilization. You see, you don't eat animal. You cannot eat. You can eat, but you don't eat. If you want to eat, you make a replica of the animal from a platter of, uh, what do you call? Dough. And then from wheat flour. Let's say you want to eat a crocodile. Don't eat the real crocodile. Make a replica of the a crocodile from a wheat flour to, uh, there are some bakeries who do like that and eat it. But the problem is not the actual crocodile itself, it is the mentality, I am eating a crocodile. Ah, that's the problem. Let's say someone is eating a vegetarian food, but he or she needs the chicken flavor. Ah, you are not eating the chicken, but chicken flavor. You say, I cannot eat like this, give me chicken flavor, but I am not eating actual chicken. The, in Buddhism the problem is, the mind about the chicken flavor. You cannot avoid that. You are clung to that, clinging, clinging. So then this part we have to understand this way. Uh, what do you call? Things are, lot of people take bad changes. Buddha said there are many good changes are happening in the world. So understand the both. Buddha is more concerned. I think uh, we don't have time to cover up all. So let's leave this. Maybe we can pick up in the Q&A time today. Uh, but we will cover a little bit more. Uh, Buddha is more concerned about how much food are we supposed, not what to eat. We cannot make a 
certain requirement for that. If you go up north, northern hemisphere, they cannot survive from the vegetables because uh, they can't live. So that means those people cannot be ever Buddhist. You can't say so, right? Because that is the way. Uh, so, a lot of people take bad changes only. What if that you wake up early in the morning, you say, you think like that. You wake up in the morning. Uh, say, uh, everything is impermanent. Is that a good vibe? You are waking up in the bed now. Okay, you see the clock. You know you have to do things. Everything is impermanent. Is that a good vibe? Or bad vibe or a real bit uh, demotivation vibe? It's not, it's not a happy vibe. Because there is another part of anicca. Second part, things are changing. Yeah, we can change things. That's why people don't think about anything. They listen to the what you call good vibes music in the morning. You know, they feel that they want to become more I inspired by them. It's like a, a ceremonial dhamma talk, cerem like our Buddhist funeral. When you go to a Buddhist funeral, uh, normally monks do it in the ceremonial way only. That's a good time to give a good dhamma talk. We have to, we have to bring that inspiration because people are ready to understand something. But everything is very ceremonial. Okay, pour the water, chanting, and we go. Ah, everything's done. Now your devotee is in the heaven. <laughs> a ceremonial only. That is the good place to give a good dhamma talk about life. Short, not a long, very short dhamma talk. Quality dhamma talk. Five minute dhamma talk. But we have become all ceremonial all the while for many years, 60, 70, many centuries. That's why Buddhism is having some issues, uh, the way how they practice. So we have to believe things are changing, there are a lot of good things are happening. Someone who is making more money in the life than last couple of years, someone is uh, making more business, more commission, someone is passing an exam. Let's say you are in a family, your loved ones never appreciated you last uh, 10 to 15 years. Suddenly your husband is complimenting in the 13th year. You feel so happy, huh? how come this is happening? Tra transformation is happening. Your wife is giving a very nice compliment. Right? So that is a good change. So it is a part of Vanitya. So let's embrace it. What about other things? You've never been called by your loved ones, you are pretty, you are beautiful, but suddenly, out of luck or whatever, <laughs> someone is saying, you are so beautiful today. Never, they never compliment like. They always pick on you, hey, you are not nice, you, know, you look very ugly or whatever. And then, but today you got this thing, you are so happy. Because when other people tell you it's normal, but when your loved ones say you feel so great about your life, right? Let's say you go out, people on the road, maybe mentally sick people saying that you are a stupid person, you know, a stupid driving, you know. You are driving very, who gave you the license here, you know. Right? But when you go home, your daughter is nagging to you, whining to you. Which one is more hurting? That daughter's one. A lot of clinging to her. Right? So we understand. What if the, our loved ones are changing for the good sake? Good change. Right? So we have to embrace anicca this way. Not, I think impermanence is a partial, not a full translation. So I don't agree with this translation. Of, it's a little bit of anicca. But the proper translation is changes, good, bad changes. It's a positive translation. Changes are happening. Let's embrace them as necessary. So when you understand anicca means changes, good, bad changes. How do we understand? In two ways. Things are changing, experiences are changing, life is changing. At the same time, we can change the life. We can change our everything. Most of the things. Don't think about the impossible. Think about the possible part of life, right? Because people always work more about the problem. Even uh, Four Noble Truths, right? Four Noble Truths. What are the Four Noble Truths? The Four Noble Truths in Buddhism, the most important truths. What is it called? Uh, dissatisfaction. Cause of dissatisfaction. Then, way out of dissatisfaction and, uh, sorry, um, yeah, way out, the way to the way, layout, way out. Now, what are the 
truths that people are more concerned about out of these four, the way how they listen to Dhamma talks and the practice. They are more concerned about first two. Understand, this is the problem. Are you spending more time for the problem? In our life, people who are spending more time for you, you said that that day, yeah? that is why. It is happening even today. There are people who are always bringing the problem, problem, problem. If you spend more time for the problem, solution time is gone. So the last two is about the solution. Let's talk about this part. More and more. How to practice Noble Eightfold Path? Not life is Dukkha. Forget about it. That is why you practice Noble Eightfold Path. Right? Let's talk about positive things. Right? So in the same way, we understand changes are possible. Let's talk about what the Buddha said about food habits. What did he say? Did he tell us you should not eat this? You should not eat this. He didn't say anything about it. But what he said, there is something very important about food. What is it? The amount of food that we are consuming every day. That is a part of hurting us. I think we hurt us a lot by true bad uh, eating habits. Our own bad eating habits. So nobody hurt us. We, we hurt us. We hurt us. Forget about the other people around you. They also might hurt in their own way. But we hurt us uh, all the time. What did the Buddha say about the food? He said, you should eat in a certain way. He said, moderation. Moderation in food. Moderation. This one. Moderation in food. What is this? How to do it? He said, when you eat, never fill your tummy with the food. Never fill it. Chattaru pancha alupe abutva udakampive. Leave four to five moses of food and then drink water instead. Very interesting. Now, when there are lots of conversations going on, dieting, intermittent fasting in the modern world, in this modern medical research and in uh, what you call well-being culture, yoga, well-being culture. People always talk about this kind of thing. The Buddha said, leave, to, leave four to five morsels. That means, I don't know how you eat, maybe with the spoon fork, maybe with your chopstick, maybe with the hand, whatever the way you eat, leave four to five morsels. Because at that time they ate with the hand. And then a good amount of food. Think about it good amount of food, four to five, you drink water instead. Why? Why is the most important part? The Buddha said, if you eat by leaving four to five morsels of food, drinking water instead, sanikang, sanikang ayungira, you will age slowly. Is it important to you? <laughs> ah, very important. You go to many conference seminars by paying 10,000 ringgit sometime huh? <laughs> to find this. It's here, you know. <laughs> it's here. Transformation is here. Why to pay more when you have everything around? Maybe you haven't heard this kind of Dhamma before. <laughs> Why? Always Dukkha, Dukkha, Dukkha. <laughs> so how to find this uh, aging story? That means Buddha talks. Buddha is the one who talks about anti-aging. Not these modern people. Then you go to buy a soap, they say anti-aging soap. Shampoo, anti-aging. That is the uh, modern way to promote there. I don't know whether they can, you can anti-age with the soap. Uh, maybe your skin, perhaps. But the real anti-aging process comes from how much food you eat. That is healing. You heal yourself. Why? Why to die early? Why to die in your late 50s? Why to die in your late 60s? Why not to live longer? Perhaps there are people who are in their early time, they look very old. Why? They are bad eating habits. So always try to live like 20 years behind your actual age, uh, you're 50 and you like, look like 30. That's nice. I mean, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not clinging. Because when you live longer, you can practice longer. Sometimes you, you have head dhamma, a lot of dhamma in your head, and you pass away, you don't know how to practice. That means you have no time to practice. Create time for the practice. So, Buddha said, you can age slowly. How you can age slowly? When you eat 
by leaving four to five morsels of food and drinking water. This again tells us something very interesting. What is it? Don't eat a lot. Huh? Four to five morsels of morsels means uh, yeah, morsel means like mouth. Maybe mouthful, mouthful. At that time, they ate with the hand. So think about one, two, three, four, five. Huh? Then leave out this this much food. One, two, three, four, five. That means quite a uh, big amount of portion. So what does this mean? Eat less, right? In today's world, compared to your uh, grandfather's time, we have easy access to food. You just order by the apps. Food is uh, at the doorstep. Yes. Do you want more? <laughs> I'm sorry. Enough for today, right? A lot of food are there. Right? Makan is not that a difficult feeling at, uh, anymore. But uh, t uh, 20 years ago, you have to go to the grocery shop, you have to choose, you have to come, you have to slow cook, whatever. A lot of time you're spending for the cooking. And plus, at that time, transportation issues, not people coming and giving us food, right? So now things have been easy. It's good. But because things are good, easy, don't mess up in your food habits. Because if you mess up, you can't anti-age. Anti-aging is a Buddhist concept. It's not a modern concept. I just tell you, to be honest. But people who understood only certain part of Buddhism said, no, Buddhism is aging something. Buddhism is suffering type of thing. No, Buddhism is both anti-aging and also giving us insights about the aging. Both. That's why now we have a very difficulty in bringing the proper right Buddhism, which the Buddha said, because out there is, is a very aged Buddhism. That's why a uh, lot of young people are going away from Buddhism. Some other religions are very easy to practice because you bring lots of suffering based provisional understand. So let me again tell you, we are going to catch up with the uh, course number three in our Q&A up to this point. First thing to, first cause why we are not, why we haven't been able to heal is uh, mental, emotional, physical is we don't have enough proper Kalyana meter. So if you don't have, please invest. Or oh, if you have a high and buy uh, activity base friends, uh, you may try whether you can build a relationship with that person better if you have someone in your family life uh, to build that kind of a relationship, to learn from that person, become a better person every day. It's a process, right? So that is number one. Second is accepting. In my, the meditation we said accepting more and more. So that is good. But sometimes we don't have to accept. So are we supposed to accept everything? Let's say there is someone who has a bad habit of eating. So that person accepts the bad habits. I have bad habits. Nobody can change me. I keep eating all this junk stuff. I keep going back to my old practice. No, you don't have to. Resist. Go back to the Buddha way. The stuff that we t talk about. Buddha also talk about this anti-aging concept. You resist at that point. Accept the right ones. Don't accept the unnecessary things. If you accept, you become a victim to them. You become a victim to those ideas. So then when you properly accept, going beyond the denial, then a lot of healing is happening. You feel happy in the proper way. Okay, so then we will discuss the uh, other courses in our Q&A. Now it's almost a dana time. Uh, so then uh, it's good that we discuss about the food habits because now dana time. So I think you will pay attention to this uh, quantity of the food. And we will be having a, what do you call, we go into the uh, dana hall. We have the Buddha puja. And then after that, you are going to the Jayanti hall in the middle. And I'll be joining with you at that point there to reflect the uh, mindful uh, dana uh, reflection. Okay. To collect the food then wait for you to ah, So what is happening is that after the Buddha puja done in the dana hall, collect, I think it is as a packet, um, plate. like a plate. Food so take the plate, don't start eating, you wait. You, you sit down, wait until I come, and then we will start the thing. And he has a uh, interviews, uh, what do you call sign-up sheet. Uh, I only accept 12 people for today. 
spots. Okay. Ah, twelve spots. Uh, and then if you want to, maybe one last. Maybe if you want, maybe uh, tomorrow, so you can go. And I think the box is ready yeah. for any Dhamma yes. questions. There's so the box. Maybe those who are shy to meet my day. Oh, or yeah, you have a general question? Not shy to me, shy to ask <laughs> questions. <yeah. laughs> I don't think they are shy. <laughs> so, it's a small piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You can write your question. Uh -huh. Maybe the question is more general and can benefit uh -huh. others. others uh, okay. you can. Empathy will ask. Uh, yeah. 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 Write, write in clear English. Huh? Drop yeah. in the box. Eh? If you don't know, you write in uppercase. So, yeah, easy for me to understand. Alright, so please, uh, now uh, we are going to uh, head to the Dana Center. May all the good karmas we've been making today, up to this moment of time, uh, be supportive and helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nepal. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I think this hole is going to be locked, is it? <laughs>